Hello everyone, myself Ambika along with my uh, project group Kunjal and Andrew are here to give you a short presentation on securing enterprise API. So uh, let's get started with it. Um, what is an API? Well, API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. Now, every time you use uh, Facebook or send an instant message or even check weather on your phone, yes, you are using an API. Now, application programming interfaces are, the, are at the forefront of today's technology innovations. They allow mobile applications, cloud computing, and legacy systems to abstract infrastructure applications and services from the integration points that they serve. Now, API architectures uh, deliver the uh, rapid innovation and agile development that uh, have transformed both corporate and uh, government IT architectures. Now, let's get into a little bit of history. Um, since the early days of computing, developers have struggled to make applications communicate. Specialized protocols such as COM+, <clears throat> CORBA, and even SOAP have emerged over the years, but none were sufficient to meet uh, the need for scale, simplicity, and cross-language functionality. But the answer was actually in front of us all the time. Uh, that is, the World Wide Web, WWW, um, was the first truly scalable distributed system that tied together disparate platforms with a protocol that was simple to understand but deceptively powerful. <clears throat> Sorry, um, APIs are a uh, technology behind this ap approach. Now, APIs are like windows to an application, uh, which is a direct conduit that leads straight into the core of functionality and the data residing in the heart of the app. Well, I know all these uh, sounds like rocket science, but uh, the granularity boundary simply describes how much of the back-end systems a calling application can access. Well, uh, the unfortunate irony uh, is that the same things that make API so great and powerful also make them a perfect target for hackers. Well, uh, why there is a need to secure enterprise API. Well, as you can see in the image, uh, this is a model of an um, secure uh, API. Now, um, we have different layers in, in the model and each layer answers the questions which are mentioned in the right-hand side of the image. Uh, well, um, uh, by the time I give you an overview, uh, you can have a look on the, uh, on the model. Well, to address these gaps uh, and mitigate risks associated with the participating in API, uh, agencies must incorporate API security as part of the cybersecurity strategy. The uh, risk of uh, insecure API is not an issue of technology capability, but rather one of failing to properly use existing API security technology. Uh, in the modern computing era, API security should be a business case and not an afterthought. Well, old habits die hard, don't they? APIs might uh, represent increased risk for the enterprise, but the potential benefits they can bring to an organization can overshadow shadow any inherent dangers. The greater threat may be in how we implement APIs. Well, APIs by definition are an abstraction from an actual service. Interaction with an API requires a protocol break, which means the information consumers are connecting to the API rather than to the backend systems directly. But classic cybersecurity doesn't provide visibility into what is coming in and what is going out of the backend applications that are fronted by the APIs. How do APIs increase organizations' risk? Well, the uh, problem with APIs is that they often provide a roadmap describing the underlying implementation of an application. This gives hackers valuable clues that could lead to attack vectors they might otherwise overlook. APIs tend to be extremely clear and self-documenting at their best, providing all valuable intelligence for hackers. But increased visibility isn't the only risk APIs introduced. 
Increasing the number of potential calls also increases the attack surface, meaning that the hacker um, uh, hacker simply has more to exploit and risk increases with the opportunity. But the granularity boundary, boundary simply describes how much of the backend systems a calling application can access. A well-designed API enables organizations to deliver a powerful web tool directly to their employees, clients, and the customers. Well, a good API developer understands the threat profile of what they are designing. Unfortunately, the API developers come from a web designing background, which might, you know, they might bring um, some bad ha habits along with them. Now, this is an um, architecture of a secure API. Um, the best practice for API security architecture is to separate out the implementation and API security into distinct tiers. These separate tiers emphasize that API design and API security are essentially different roles, requiring different expertise overall. This is a very logical separation of concerns, one that focuses expertise on uh, the right problem at the right time. Under this model, an API uh, developer can focus completely on the application domain, ensuring that each API is well designed and promotes integration between different apps. This releases the developer from responsibility of securing the published API, as this will be performed by a dedicated API security professional. This, this you know, uh, makes a life a little easier for them. The API security expert is now responsible for applying security policy consistently across the organization. Their focus is on identity, threats, and data security. This uh, is vitally important to uh, give anyone performing this critical uh, role the right tools for the job as they will need to separate out on security from the actual API implementation. Well, the CA API gateway is the right tool. Uh, this uh, is a hardened appliance which is provided in either physical or virtual form factor and is generally deployed in organizations DMZ as you can see in the figure. <clears throat> Sorry, it is uh, the secure proxy uh, between the internal application and the outside internet. CA API gateways provide uh, the API security administrator with complete control over access control, threat detection, confidentiality, integrity, and audit across every API the organization publishes. Uh, let's take an um, example. Well, I, um, I, I'll just uh, give you an overview of the instance that happened in the US National Weather Service. Well, APIs often introduce unwanted uh, second and third order effects to the internal enterprise core. The US National Weather Service developed an Android application that connected to its core systems via an API. The API layer had the ability to make unfettered requests to the internal core systems, which resulted in the internal core National Weather Service system going down due to external denial of service attack. This unprotected API threat should be a wake up call for every security architect. Unlike what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, what happens in external API layer does not stay external. APIs are not a blocking layer, they are an admission layer. Anything admitted to the enterprise core needs strict scrutiny that begins with managing the API layer with an API gateway. Now the attacks and hijacks will be explained by my friend Kunjal. Hi everyone, my name is Kunjal and I will be guiding you to the attacks of API and its security. My friend Ambika just explained what an API is. So every API is unique and since it is unique, each instance carries unique risk based on its underlying implementation. This would seem to make API security almost impossible. Fortunately though, most individual attacks against API fall into one of these categories. The first is the parameter attack. 
identity and session attack man in the middle attack let us now look what is parameter attack parameter attacks exploit the data sent into an api including url query parameters http headers or post content the most common is a sql injection it attempts to manipulate a system by providing it with inputs that exploit the behavior of applications and the infrastructure that supports databases. The classic example is a snippet of JavaScript submitted into a posting on a web forum. Bounds or buffer overflow attacks are also parameter attacks. Parameter attacks usually results from the developers not restricting inputs to a narrow range of anticipated types. APIs may clearly identify a parameter's underlying meaning as meaningful internal names are typically directly mapped to the external API parameters. Now, let us look at identity and session attacks. Identity attacks exploit flaws in authentication, authorization, and session tracking. APIs introduce the concept of application identity, a key which is known as an API key that uniquely identifies which application is calling an API. Session management is another area of considerable confusion in the API community. Browsers maintain session using cookies, but unfortunately, APIs rarely take a consistent approach to session management. Next is the man-in-the-middle attacks. It intercepts legitimate transactions and exploits the unencrypted data. They can reveal confidential information, alter a transaction in flight, or even replay legitimate transactions. APIs that are not configured properly using SSL or TLS are highly vulnerable to this form of attack. In this API world, the stakes are higher, the transport protection is essential to secure data, to secure sessions and access to functionality. Let us now look at the example of the man in the middle attack. From the diagram, it describes a situation in which an attacker sits in between a sender and a receiver of information. The sender assumes that he or she is interacting with the web server and the web server talking to a valid user. However, man in the middle appears to the server as the valid user and a valid user as the web server and hence can retrieve all the confidential information thus misusing it and attacking the user. Let us now go with the security. Although APIs are susceptible to a broad range of attacks, applying just five simple mitigation strategies will allow an organization to securely publish APIs. As you can see, there are five strategies. The first strategy is to validate parameters. The first step is to sanitize all incoming data to confirm that it is valid and will not cause harm. The most practical approach is to apply schema validation. Schema validation should be as restrictive as possible using typing, ranges, sets and even explicit while listing whenever possible. One option for XML-based content types is to use the XML schema language. However, JSON is far simpler to compose and understand, which thus makes simpler to secure. The second strategy is threat detection. Threat detection is generally an exercise in blacklisting risky content, such as SQL statements or script tags. Good schema validation can protect against many injection attacks, but consider also explicit scanning for common attack signatures. Finally, remember that message size or complexity can itself be an API threat. It is risky to simply start processing parameters in an application without first validating that the content is within an acceptable range. Next is turning on SSL everywhere. 
adding SSL or TLS and not only adding it but applying this correctly is an effective defense against the risk of man in the middle attack. SSL or TLS provides integrity on all data exchanged between a client and a server. It optionally provides client-side authentication using certificates, which is important in many environments. The fourth strategy is to apply rigorous authentication and authorization. User and app identity are concepts that must be implemented and managed separately. Consider authorization based on a broad identity context, including practical factors such as incoming IP address, access time windows, device authentication, which is usually useful in mobile applications, geolocations, etc. Now, last but not the least is to use proven solutions. The first rule of security is do not invent your own. There is no reason to create your own API security framework as there are excellent security solutions that already exist for APIs. The best way to secure your API from any type of intrusion is to separate out API implementation and API security into distinct layers or maybe tires. Hence, protection should be made in order to avoid attacks. Let us now look at some of the examples. There are various real-time cases which are studied. Let's look at case 1, which is broken SSL or TLS. There is no other security protocol as widely used as SSL or TLS, but this does not mean that it's always deployed correctly. Additionally, the client side has to build SSL or TLS protections that function correctly to avoid known vulnerabilities. One of the countermeasures is that SSL should be replaced with TLS. From the case, you can see that there was a study done by University of Hanover in Germany that found out that almost 8% of publicly available Android applications had broken SSL or TLS implementations, which also included uh, trusting all certificates, trusting all certificate authorities, and using both encrypted and non-encrypted mixed mode sessions. With this case, you can see that how uh, an SSL or TLS implementation can affect an individual user. Let us now look at the second case study, which is order of operations. APIs can appear to be a static set of getters and setters, but once they are built into other applications, the combinations and permutations can drive unexpected behavior on the enterprise back end. Granular control on the server side for full session state management is the main countermeasure for this. From the case, you can see that in 2014, the dominant Bitcoin marketplace fell victim to a race condition. Attackers found a vulnerability whereby they could force the Bitcoin marketplace to accept an altered transaction and block a legitimate transaction. The net result was that it was drained of Bitcoins and he was literally pulled out of business. These cases let us know how these attacks destroy things and how we should countermeasure those. Now, the rest of the presentation will be explained by my friend Andrew. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andrew and today we're going to be talking about application programming interfaces or APIs. Securing APIs in cloud computing Cloud computing overlaps with numerous existing technologies and has evolved as, a, as the primary storage and is being packaged as a physical metered service like a utility, you know, you have your phone, your, your internet, that kind of service is being now packaged as a metered service. APIs in cloud computing act as the interface between the cloud service provider and the consumer. The cloud service provider is responsible for housing the customer's sensitive data 
and also responsible for the security of that data, whether, it, whether where it's stored or if the customer is actually accessing it from a remote location. Improved access control mechanisms can be used to secure cloud APIs. Why did I say improved access control mechanisms? Because today, most APIs access is accomplished by using a password that authenticates the user to grant access to the cloud application or the service. This allows access of the user with predetermined roles, which leaves the system open to attacks from, let's say, a malicious user like a disgruntled employee. We want to move from this predetermined roles to a task-based access control option. Proposing this option, we want to make sure that the authorized user has access and the rights that he gets with that access is dependent on the tasks he's trying to perform and other criteria like, let's say, the time of day. For instance, in a retail environment, at some point overnight or during the early morning, there's going to be what they call where they break or change the day. Now, that person who has the access to do that should only have that access between a predetermined time, let's say, from in the, if it's in the morning at 6 a.m. they do it, they shouldn't have access, let's say, before 5.55 or after 6.10. Now, once they also complete that task of breaking day, that access should be removed or revoked until, let's say, you know, that same time frame the following day, 24 hours later. Now that we understand how to secure an API or why we want to upgrade the security of an API in cloud computing, let's take a look at the future of four APIs. To understand the future, we should look at APIs of yesterday to see where we're coming from. An API was used by a developer when a product needed to be accessed, but it wasn't held you know, in the same group as that product. You had to go out and get it from another product. So it's like a server reaching out to another server or a consumer reaching out for the services on a server, all right? These APIs were private and required authentication and authorization to gain access to interact with them. This allowed for a great deal of privacy and allowed full control of the API, but it limited integration. So because it was on a platform that was specific to whatever it was you know, doing, it wasn't worldwide. It wasn't like the World Wide Web where everybody can put something into a browser and you know it would show the same website okay integration is a major driver and it's pushing api technology into the future the concept of a private api is now being replaced by the concept of an open api which facilitates sharing um, communication and that simplifies integration open access to the api creates a security issue, but as we discussed, we can mitigate these using an architectural approach and also an updated access control model. APIs can be a great way for the enterprise to quickly and easily integrate applications. However, while it offers great potential for agility, it introduces increased risk and it creates a need for API security. Addressing API security using the architectural approach, as I said, before any development is attempted should enable the enterprise to safely and securely reap the benefits of deploying this emerging technology. All right, so we've come to the end of our PowerPoint presentation on application programming interfaces. I wanted to thank everyone, including my teammates, for you know keeping me honest and getting help me get this done. Um, it was great working with y'all. I want to thank the professor for giving us this wonderful project, and have a great day, guys. Bye bye.